these fields and courts could talk. They would tell you about the greatness of the history of our athletes in Roy City, Texas. Roy City Athletics is home of some of the most memorable athletes in the state, dating back to the early 1900s. And no one knows the history of Roy City Athletics more than a man by the name of Bobby Summers. We have a lot of history in our in our school district, and our school district is so old, and it goes back in you know back nearly 120 years. Uh, 1911 was when uh, Roy City's uh, football started, and that's when we had our first uh, football games. Uh, football was not, you know, still was in its infancy at that time. But after the success the athletics program has brought over the last century, Roy City had been missing one thing, a Hall of Fame. As far as putting the Hall of Fame together, we wanted to go back as far as we could, but we wanted to make sure that we documented everything and uh, made sure that we had proof of everything that we had. And so far, we've been, we've been successful to do that. First was going back and, and remembering some of the days, you know, that I went to school here and uh, my family uh, dates back into the 1890s, my, my family did. Um, we've got like four uh, generations. And so we, I wanted to go back during that time and what it was like was to go back and to call some of these guys that are still around and, uh, and it was exciting to be able to call them and tell them that they were part of the Hall of Fame because we wanted those guys to be, uh, uh, to be remembered. On the night of Friday, October 13th, 2017, the first 15 members of the Hall of Fame were inducted and recognized for their outstanding accomplishments at Roy City High School. We wanted to go back as far as we could uh, first and get some of the older players, so that's the reason we got some of the 1928s, uh, 1930s, and you remember Bob Crow came out and he was 104 years old and Roy City's first district championship was in 1930. So Bob Crow came to our game that night and so he, he's one of the other guys and his family is around Roy City. That, those are the typical type of people that we wanted to make sure that represented our school district and represented the Hall of Fame, and we wanted to make sure it was a true Hall of Fame. Robert Bob Crow played guard for Roy City and was a part of the first district championship team in 1930. Our oldest living Hall of Fame inductee at the time of our induction, and the oldest living ex-Roy City football player born in 1913, making him 104 years old. Yeah, I played. Offense and defense, and uh, I did all the kicking. All the kicking. And, uh, and he was a very good football player, very large for his size. He played on our first uh, district championship, so we wanted, to, he's, he's here, we wanted to make sure that we got him on our Hall of Fame. Desmond Robinson, known as Stick Robinson, was an outstanding tailback for the Roy City football program, leading the Bulldogs to consecutive district championships in the late 1980s and received a scholarship to play at the collegiate level. He went to Ottawa University. That's where he got, a, um, bachelor, he got his bachelor's degree up there. And that's, um, he went there for four years. We still we give an award out for Stick Robinson every year. Because even though Stick was the spotlight, but he still also liked for somebody else to carry the ball too. You know, he didn't never think he was better than anyone else. He let, you know, let the other boys would like to let them try to do their show, their qualities and how good they are too. But he learned a lot of obedience at Roy City. Due to the complications of leukemia, Stick passed away at the age of 26. In being down, he saw how an, the other half lived, you know, because he learned how when you can be up today and down tomorrow, that's a good lesson to realize that you're not always on top and you're not always strong. You know, Stick was looking forward to a football career. Okay, the Lord has something different in store for him. And he, my mom raised him in church, 
so he know how it is to uh, have faith in God because like I say when you're up one day and down the next but his faith in God kicked in and saw him through that while he was in the hospital. Megan Frosto, a high-level athlete in several track and field events during her time in Roy City ISD. She was a multiple record holder and in 2007 she achieved the only Women's National Championship in the 400 meter dash. After high school, I went to the University of Houston where I was a heptathlete and open high jumper for five years because I got a red shirt year. Um, and then after that, I went to Northern Kentucky University to get my MBA. And while I was there, I was a graduate assistant coach and I coached the heptathletes and high jumpers. When I started track and field or started any athletics at all, it was my seventh grade year here at Roy City. and. I didn't even know what sports were. So the fact that Coach Noel put me on the A-team basketball team, I was like shocked. And then just knowing from there on that I could be a part of athletics and that scholarships were an option to go to track, created track to be more than just track to me. It was a way to get a college degree and I owe a lot of that to Coach Drum, Coach Barbie, Coach Bookout, Coach Noel, Coach Marshall, just all the phenomenal coaches. A Hall of Fame is more than just recognizing an athlete's success. It's about the recognition of their experiences at Roy City and honoring the impact that they've had on the school, the community, and the current athletes and future athletes to come.